Who's heard of WAND or the, or the Inversion Tower Network? Yep. All right, that's a damn good start. Who's registered to be able to look at it and use it? All right, we're kicking now. Who's actively following it and using it? Yeah. Okay, you know, that's all right. That's all right. At least we've got a few that have registered. So I'm going to quickly just hit a few highlights. For me, it's about instilling confidence in, in, in the tool. And it is a tool. It's just to give you extra information to make your informed decisions. It's not telling you what to do. At the end of the day, the applicator in the paddock has to make that decision. All right, um, so hazardous inversions, what makes them hazardous? Um, and the other thing is, um, well, I'll say it now, vertical temperature difference, which is the measure of whether or not there's an inversion present or not, is a good indicator, but it's not really the truth or, or, or the cause of the hazard. It's actually all about turbulence. And prior to now, we haven't been able to measure turbulence. Um, so this bit of schematic on the, on the left here, typical daytime spraying, and you have turbulence. You've got wind blowing across, but it's, it's rolling, and it's driving those droplets down to deposition, into the canopy, into the target, or those that do escape are being dispersed into a larger atmosphere. So the old you know, answer to pollution is dilution sort of mantra. However, it becomes hazardous when we start talking about laminar airflows which are often are not, uh, uh, involved with, obviously, inversion conditions. So we're now talking about airflows that we've got, haven't got that turbulence. And you may have noticed, say, fogs early in the morning. You'll see the laminar bands, but sometimes they can be moving at a fair, fair clip. But the fact that they're moving parallel and you don't have the turbulence is a hazardous thing. You'll get sick and tired of me talking about turbulence. Get used to it. Label statements. <coughs> Uh, of course, you all study the label, you know, like me, I just do it all the time, I love it. But we're all getting label statements around, do not apply when hazardous surface temper inversion conditions are present. And then there's the follow-up sort of bit of advice saying that these exist from an hour before sunset all through the night to an hour after. So as a spray applicator, how do you know? How are you measuring, judging, making a decision about those atmospheric conditions. Are they hazardous? Are they non-hazardous? So just because I like to be contentious, it's guesswork. <laughs> Seriously, it's guesswork. You've got experience, you've got knowledge, but at the end of the day, you're second guessing what's going on. Um, I've often stood there and, hey, when I used to do trials, you know, handheld boom trials, oh, I've got, got a breeze on my face, I can feel it, time to go. But if that breeze is laminar, it's hazardous. Or do we have turbulence? So we talk about visual cues, dust behind things, fog early in the morning, sounds being more crisp, um, smells being more crisp. That's the sort of support systems we've had up until now. Not, not that great. Um, you'd all be familiar with the traditional sort of cup and vein uh, wind measuring device. This is our U-Butte thing over here, ours, you know, Campbell Scientific. It's the backbone of WAND. It's a 3D sonic anemometer. There's one of those at 10 metres, and there's a 2D one at 2 metres taking these measurements. And what that enables you to do, or the system to do, rather than the traditional, which is just giving us a horizontal wind speed, basically, this is giving us wind speeds horizontally, vertically, basically 3D within that sphere. So between that 2 and 10 metre space, we're measuring that turbulence in all directions and giving us a number. All right, this is the, the lovely graph that uh, Annette alluded to or somebody alluded to. I, I, I love it, but anyway. Um, so bear with me. We've got a white line here, which is basically the difference between to the right being a temperature inversion present and yeah, red's bad, so just remember that as we go for the next few slides, red is bad. To the left, the vertical temperature difference is, is negative, that's during the day. So there's no temperature inversion. Y-axis height is wind speed, but the colouring, so this is calling it the vertical turbulence measured in metres per second. When you look at WAND, they call it a hazard index measured in metres per second. So, and the, and the threshold that's been determined 
is 0.2 metres per second. So above 0.2 metres per second, turbulence, as we're saying, is uh, safe, in inverted commas, to spray. You've got to con consider all your other decision-making things, but we've got sufficient turbulence that we're going to get deposition. Um, so as we move up through the, the greens and the blues into the purples, we're getting more and more turbulence. So that's great. That's a typical daytime spraying scenario here on the left. No doubt about it out here on the right, strong inversions, um, very little turbulence, it'd be very little air, wind speed as well, uh, quite hazardous. But what about this space in here? We do have a uh, inversion, but the, ra the amount of turbulence is equivalent to daytime spraying. So that's sort of our, well not sort of, that is the definition, the delineation between hazardous and non-hazardous inversion conditions the amount of turbulence present at that time. Uh, a simpler way to look at it, so daytime spraying, here's our two temperatures, uh, 10 metre and, the, and the, uh, the 2 metre, lots of squiggles, lots of turbulence. We have an inversion here now, the, the temperatures have inverted, very laminar flow, very little squiggles, no doubt about it being a hazardous condition. But over here on the right, it's still an inversion. The vertical temperature difference is closer, true, but it's still an inversion, but it's non-hazardous. The turbulence is greater than the 0.2 metres per second, and that's the measure of it, all the squiggles. Um, just on this one, just to pick up the fact, this heavy red line is the vertical temperature difference. So we have an inversion for 12 hours that night six hours of it was hazardous. So we could have been spraying in the, in the tails either side of that because we're, we're in non-hazardous inversion conditions. Um, this one on the left, the 13 and a half hours, only four of which was hazardous. It's not always that way. You know, sometimes they match up. There's actually scenarios occasionally where it is hazardous and there's no temperature inversion. But we've actually got a mechanism and a tool to inform you or to help inform you make that decision. And what is it? Is this thing called WAND? Whether a network data is the acronym? Um, just a comment, at the moment it's a web app. So if you go into the Apple App, app Store or, or the Android App Store on your phone or your tablet, you won't find it. You've got to open up a browser, go to wand.com.au. So, yeah, if you can't find it because you've been looking for it in the App Store, that's why. Eventually it will become apps, but at the moment. So we can, we can look at this thing on our laptops, on our home computers, on our tablets, on our phones when we're in the rigs. But we've got to do it through a, um, through a web page. That's the only thing. There's the, the tower for what it's worth. What do you see as a user? Well, there's basically two screens. And this is the one I'd be focusing on primarily. And, and that's it, that's what you see. The first bit, the hazardous inversion. And it's simply going to say present or absent. If it's present, then the turbulence is lower than 0.2. If it's absent, it's higher than 0.2. If it's present, remember that label statement, do not spray in hazardous temperature inversions, do not go past go, do not collect $200. The rest is almost meaningless at that point. There's a thing here called the Nowcast. So WAND is updating that data to you every 10 minutes. It's sampling at 4 hertz, but it's updating every 10 minutes. Now the, the Nowcast is predicting whether or not the conditions, the hazardous inversion will be absent or present within the next two hours. And that's being updated every 10 minutes. So my, I'm two thirds of the way through my tank, you know, 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to have to go back and refill. What do I do? What do we think the conditions will be like in the next two hours? It's going to be present. Okay, knock off. It's absent. Okay, go back, fill up, keep going. So it's helping you to make that sort of a decision. Um, I really love looking at all the wind speeds and I'll go into that in a second, but wind speed at two metres Wind speed, wind speed gusts at two metres, and that's a real good indication of turbulence. If, if there's you know, gusts going on, and if, the, if there's, there's very little gusty wind, and we've got bugger all turbulence typically. Wind speed at, um, at 10. And just as a comment, synoptic winds that you might see on BOM, they're all measured at 10 metres. 
and you're delivering your spray at one to a uh, half to one to one meter and under inversion conditions those winds those laminar winds tend to decouple from synoptic winds. So the synoptic might be going that way and those laminars could be going that way because they're driven by topography and cold air drainage in this boundary layer of, of sort of two to 10 metres. So just looking at BOM and saying, oh, you know, there's a, their, their wind speeds at 10 metres, it's going in that direction, can be very misleading to what's going on in reality. And a lot of you with um, you know, on-farm weather stations, if you had a look, you'd probably start seeing some of those differences. The usual other things, delta T, temperature, solar radiation, and everybody wanted a rain gauge, so we've got rain gauges as well. Um, so this first one, hazardous inversion was present. We're not, we're not operating. This is what we'd like to see, hazardous inversion absent, now cast absent, so I can go spraying, I can keep spraying for the next couple of hours. The other sort of scenario, had its inversion absent, so I'm currently spraying, that's great. Uh, we, the now casting is telling us that it's most likely will be present within the next two hours. So if I haven't started, I, I'm not going to start. And if I'm halfway through or, or you know, when I finish this load, I'd be pulling up. So it's giving us fairly clear and straight um, information to make some decisions on. What's driving it, and I'd mentioned I love looking at the uh, the winds, I don't subscribe to Netflix anymore, I just look at towers and graphs and oh, it's great stuff. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, so remembering red is bad. So here, down this bottom one we'll start with, this is your um, vertical temperature difference. So where we're red, where we're up above the line, we have the classic temperature inversion. The top is the hazard index. So the bit I've circled if we were just looking at inversion, and if that's all we could maybe measure, because we happen to have a, a tower that's got the, the uh, temperature sensors, and there's a few of those around, the private operators and things, um, pre the uh, inversion is present. But it's non-hazardous. And this measure of, point of metres per second, the amount of turbulence, you look at what was it like all the previous day. Basically the same. So that's what we're getting at, the fact that even though it's night time, there's an inversion present, it's non-hazardous because we've got equivalent turbulence to during daytime spraying. Sure, as the inversion strengthened, it's gone into hazardous index. And in my simple mind, what's really driving this is those winds. So this is my two metre wind during the day. It's actually picked up as we've gone into the evening and into the early hours of the, of the night. The, ten, uh, sorry, the two metre gusts are equivalent. So our winds here are around sort of 12, 15 kilometres an hour at two. Our gusts are in the sort of the 20, 22, 25 range. And our 10 metres are up around 25, 30. So those lines, those circles, sorry, match up to this, what's going on here. So that wind and turbulence is a very strong driver in the calculation of, of that uh, sigma W. It's called the, the hazard index. As those winds have crashed, you know, there's basically no gustiness, it's equivalent. That's where we've gone into the hazardous condition. So that's the linkage. And you know, for me, vertical temperature difference is irrelevant if I'm able to look at and measure and, and consider the hazard index, the, the turbulence. This one, another, another uh, tower, another night, you know, weak inversion all night could be nicely spraying all night. It's not always that good though. You know, on, on the left here, very strong inversion throughout the night and hazardous just about for the entire time. But you've got a tool to actually make an informed decision rather than sticking your head out and saying, oh, I can smell the neighbours 2,4-D, so it must be hazardous. Um, yeah, I love quantitative things. Um, yeah, just, just more, of a, more of the same. Okay, um, I don't have any with me, but there's a three new publications from GRDC. This fact sheet, which is really just talking about, again, what makes inversions hazardous, non-hazardous. This one here is um, the weather essentials, so it looks at all weather things. You know, temperatures, delta T's, explaining it, looking at it, giving you a fair bit of information. If you're sad like me, the technical manual's a great read. Um, 
but the lead researcher, Graham Tepper, has retired. So this, getting to this point is 10 years worth of research between Cotton and Grains collaboratively. Goanna is the commercial partner bringing the commercial product to you guys. Um, so there's a three-way investment going on to bring this product to you. It's a great resource for us to have. Anyway, that's enough of my joking. Thank you so much.